So today we're going to work on solving quadratic equations. Before we actually get to the process of solving them, let's talk for a second about the possibilities for our solutions to these quadratic equations. Okay, so the first scenario that we're pretty accustomed to is that it's a quadratic equation. It's x squared, so that means we're supposed to have two answers. So graphically, what that means is that our parabola is going to cross the x-axis at two places. They could both be positive, they could both be negative, one could be positive, one could be negative, uh, whatever the scenario is. But in that case, we say that there are two real solutions. Now, they can be whole numbers, they can be fractions, they can be um, uh, non-terminating decimals. Irrational, that's what I was looking for. Irrational answers. They could be any combination of things. But when your parabola crosses the x axis twice, that means you have two real solutions. Uh, sometimes these are called roots. Obviously, these are our x intercepts. And in our calculator, that's the uh, zero function. So these are also our zeros. And I can't remember whether this is an ES or just an S. It looks really weird both ways. Um, anybody know? Okay. Anyway, not English class, right? Um, <clears throat> but you just need to be used to referring to them with any of those names. Solutions, roots, x-intercepts, zeros, they all mean the same thing. Okay? Our second case, we could have the scenario where our parabola only touches the x-axis. In that case, we have one real solution. And we call that a repeated root. That's a repeated root um, when it just touches the x-axis. <clears throat> so that occurs when we have something like a perfect square trinomial. That's what creates that. Because if you recall, when those factor, we end up with something like this, x minus 4 squared. So technically, there are two solutions. We have two factors, but they're the same factor. So that's why it's a repeated root. And that will just touch the x-axis. Okay? So we've got two, we've got one, and then we can also have our third scenario is that we have no real solutions. That occurs when our parabola does not cross the x-axis at all. It could be up here, it could be down here, it can be close to the axis, it can be far away from the axis. So this is no real solution. But we still have solutions to this equation. They're just imaginary. Okay? So we have two imaginary, or they may also refer to them as complex. Solutions. Okay, so we can still come up with an answer. It's just not going to be what we consider a real number. We'll talk about these. Hopefully we'll get to it today, but it may be tomorrow when we actually talk about the imaginary solutions. Um, and just as a side note, to go ahead and put it in your head, uh, complex solutions come in pairs. What I mean by that is when we have two real solutions, we could have something like negative 2 and positive 7. There's no true correlation between those two solutions. They're just two whole numbers. Uh, or we could have negative 1 half and positive 10. Okay? Two real solutions, but they, they're not really related to each other. But when we have imaginary solutions for complex solutions, they're going to be in pairs. So they're going to look exactly the same. They're just going to differ by a sign. We're going to have that plus or minus thing in there. You've probably seen that before, um, maybe, but we'll definitely look at it uh, later on. But I just wanted to go ahead and mention that idea. Okay, so the first way that we're going to look at solving these quadratic equations is solving our factors. Uh, and 
hopefully you know this already, but I want to remind you, your equation has to be equal to zero before you can start factoring. Your equation must be equal to zero before you start factoring. Um, you can't do anything until that point where you're not going to get the right answer. Okay? So the first one that we're going to look at here on your worksheet that I passed out is k squared minus 14k plus 49 is equal to zero. I picked a simple one to start with. Uh, just to kind of get us into the swing of things and then we'll kind of uh, bump up from there. It's already equal to zero, so we can just jump straight into factoring it. This one's very simple to factor. Uh, we've got uh, k minus 7 times k minus 7, because 7 times 7 gives us 49. 7 plus 7 gives us 14. 49 is positive, 14 is negative, so they're both negative. Uh, so look at what happens. We get the exact same factors. Uh, this is this is a perfect square trinomial. Okay, this is a perfect square trinomial. Uh, just to keep getting you used to hearing that terminology and you know what it's called, that's a perfect square trinomial um, because we got the exact same factors. So technically we can set both of them equal to zero and solve but we get the same answer for either one. We get 7, positive 7, and positive 7 when we solve both of those for k. Um, so our answer is k equals 7, and that is um, one real repeated root. Now, there's nothing on the worksheet that says you need to identify what type of solution it is after you get it, but um, I have seen where they like to ask questions about the type of solution. Not necessarily what is the solution, but what type of solution it is. So I want to try and use that terminology as much as possible so that you're familiar with it. Okay, so I think it's a good idea as you're working on these uh, to make that note as you solve these problems. Okay. Number two is not already equal to zero, but it's very easy to fix that problem. Um, most of our terms are on the left side, and our quadratic term is positive, so all I'm going to do is move that constant that's on the right side. I'm going to move it across the equal sign, so remember to uh, do the opposite operation. It was positive, so we're going to subtract it. So we have x squared plus 6x, 14 minus 6 is 8. Now it's equal to zero, so we can factor. This one's another pretty simple one. Uh, x plus 4 times x plus 2. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 plus 2 is 6. So in order for that expression to be equal to zero, either uh, one of the factors is equal to zero or both of them are equal to zero. So we set them equal to zero and solve. So we get negative 4, and we get negative 2. So uh, you can, if you want to, you can write them uh, just as a single x equals negative 4 comma negative 2. You're not saying that it's a point. You're just saying that there are two solutions, and those are two real solutions. Now, I will try and continue to remind you of this throughout the semester, but... Any time you're solving an equation, it is so easy to take a second and check your answers. There's no reason why you should not check your answers. Um, you can catch so many little tiny mistakes if you plug your answer choices back or your answers back into the original. Or if it's a multiple choice test, you've got a list of answer choices. Just plug them into the equation. Push comes to shove. That's not what I want you to do as a math teacher, but if that means the difference between you getting it right and just guessing, I want you to plug the answer choices in. Okay? The only thing you have to be careful of are those negative numbers and exponents. You've got to put the negative four in parentheses before you square it. If you want to, you can put it in parentheses when you multiply it by six, but really you don't have to. The, the big deal is when you're uh, squaring it. And then if that is an answer, it should equal 6. It does. And I'm going to take a second. Probably if the first one's correct and my other one's correct, but you never know. You might have done something silly. <clears throat> Check both of them. And you get 6. Okay. All right, now, some of you may have not seen the, um, 
how I brought that up really, really quickly. If you press second enter, it'll bring up your last entry, and you can keep doing that over and over again, and it'll just scroll through um, what you put in. Now, that's all I put in flat calculator, so it'll just keep going through those. Um, but if you haven't cleared your memory, uh, then it'll just keep going through your previous entries. Okay, so that, that's something a little bit of a time saver. Okay. Questions so far? Alright, let's look at number three. Now, in number three, you have a little bit of an option here. We've got negative 48m is equal to negative 42 minus 6m squared. Personally, I hate when the quadratic term is negative. So, I'm going to try and from the beginning make that positive. So, our 6m squared is negative where it's at. I've got to move stuff either way. So, I'm just going to move all my terms to the left side. Technically, you could just move the 48m to the right side. Uh, but if you do that, you've got to make sure you factor out the negative. People tend to forget to factor out the negative. So, I kind of avoid that just by uh, moving my quadratic term so that it becomes positive. And I also need to move the 42 so it becomes positive. Now, it doesn't need to become positive, but... In this case, it does because it was negative. Okay, so we've got 6m squared minus 48m plus 42 is equal to 0. Okay, I'm going to deal with this yet today. Always, always, always see if you can factor out a GCF. We can. 6, 48, and 42 are all divisible by 6. So we're going to reduce them. To give us m squared minus 8m plus 7. And then we're going to factor that trinomial. m minus 7 times m minus 1. Now, I have three factors this time. Now, you've probably been told in the past to just ignore the 6. And that is true. But I'm doing this on purpose because... If my GCF had had a variable, if that had been 6m instead of just 6, if I just ignore it, I'm losing a solution. Okay? Um, so in this case, no, 6 does not equal 0. Okay? But if that was 6m, 6m can equal 0 if m is 0. Um, so that's why I wrote that anyways, just so that we don't forget about that if we have a, if we have a variable in that part of the factor. Okay? So we get 7 and 1 as our two real solutions. Okay, I want to do two more with you before I turn you loose to work on some. Uh, number 4 here has a lot of moving that we need to do. Uh, I always look at my quadratic terms first, my k squares. I want to locate where they're at. In this case, I've got them on both sides. So I move it to the side where it's bigger because that will keep it positive. So it's bigger on the left side, so that means I'm going to subtract the 5k squared. I don't have a, set, uh, a k on the left side, so I'm just going to have to stick it in there. And then I do have a constant on the other side, so I'll subtract that 3 from the constant. So we get 5k squared plus 7k minus 24 is equal to 0. Okay, 5 is not a GCF, so we're going to either have to do a uh, guess and check or slip divide slide. But this one's not too bad because 5 is prime. Our only choices are 5k times k. And for 24, uh, 6 and 4 won't work. 12 and 2 won't work. Hmm. 8 and 3? Yep. 8 and 3. Okay. So we've got plus 15k minus 8k. So we set those equal to 0. Now we haven't had to deal with this yet. That first one is a two-step equation this time. 